real estate and garments. And garments. Yes, from China, Hong Kong. Everyone calls you Ham. Yeah. But I'm gonna call you Mr. Ham. Yeah. That's Mi fine. Uh, are you made in Africa? Hundred percent. I'm How? Ugandan and proudly African. Proudly African. Yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot about you as one of the youngest millionaire in Uganda. Is it millionaire in dollars or millionaire in uh, Ugandan shillings? No, actually, I may it be, I may it be moving to a billion dollars. A billion dollar? Yeah. So, congratulations in advance. Thank you, thank you, my brother. Mm. Tell me more about yourself. I'm by the names of Mr. and Ms. Chugundu, a Ugandan, a businessman trading in real estate, and now moving largely into agro-processing and value addition. Uh, I was born in Uganda, I've lived in Uganda all my life, and I'm born and bred of the current NRM administration. 39 years old yeah. in Uganda. Yeah. If you've never left the country. No, I travel in and out, but... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, like, you, you left Uganda to study abroad. No, 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 no. All I've done and all I've achieved, I've achieved in Africa. Actually, I think I'm a living example of the fact that you can make it in Africa. So why the doubt that it's not possible to make it, make it in Africa? Uh, actually, I think that is a little bit wide because um, it all comes down to one element, I think, which is reason. For me, I believe uh, we're a direct reflection of our reasoning capacity. I would ask, what do you think is the difference between the West and us, despite the fact that Africa holds 80% of the world resources, yet exploitation takes place in the West, and they claim they donate to Africa, simply because we haven't figured out on how to utilize the prevailing resources we have at hand naturally, to exploit them towards our own prosperity. So success and failure at the end of the day, just like I wrote a book, Success and Failure Based on Reason and, Re and Reality. For me, I believe reason is one of the governing elements of someone's capacity to articulately analyze what is before them and see how they can make it towards their own prosperity and the society at large. So the distance and gap between success and failure is merely reason. Are you trying to say Africa is poor because you are not reasoning? No, reason is, is a little bit deep because uh, if I take it from a general perspective, let us take the world. I think all present, past and future discoveries of humanities hmm. are a mere, or will be a mere reflection of the reasoning capacity of humanity or people of that particular period in time. Reason governs everything. When God created man, he created us with a mind. For me, I believe success and failure, it all starts and ends in the mind. There are limited resources in the world to satisfy man is unlimited wants. So it's how someone utilizes the limited resources towards their own progress, prosperity, and the societies where they live. What's your definition for success? Definition for success, survival can be success. A man can su uh, successfully survive on earth. So success is a little bit broad. Ability to live within your means and uh, ability to manage your life and solve your problems can be an element of success. But uh, as humans, we, we move hmm. for this success where you build empires, a lot of finances. Are you talking about that kind of success? I think when it comes to success to so many, uh, I mean, the world, successful people, I mean, we say successful people are people who have been able to accumulate wealth. Mm. Yeah, someone could say that Ham is a successful man, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you see, for me, I believe ability to reason is an element of success. Because when you look at Africa and the West, I think the difference between Africa and the West is merely reason. Because you see, they have simply outreasoned us. Something as simple as that. Because uh, you'd hear me talk about reason, but just like I defined it in my book, actually I wrote two books, Success and Failure Based on Reason and Reality, another book which says reason as the world masterpiece. 
why do I save reason as the world masterpiece? In life, we all have challenges. Yeah. And we all think. Thinking is basic, but reasoning is deep. When you think, act fast and short term. When you reason, you articulate deeply and act long term. That's why you see most of African programs, even when it comes to our countries, uh, we don't tend to take the long term drive. We want short term. Hmm. So, just like I defined reason in my book, reason is one's ability to deeply, articulately analyze the prevailing circumstances. Let it be an element of a challenge or a problem in order for that person to grasp and understand it in its totality within realistic perimeters, which gives them the ability to forge a corresponding solution to such a problem. problem. You know, a productive continuous chain of one's ability to solve life challenges is what is transformed into progress and prosperity at the end of the day. What problem are you solving in Uganda? No, when you talk about Uganda, it's a little bit big. But it, what problems have I solved in my life? Maybe I hold all I have, like, like I told you, to some extent, yeah. our statuses and what we possess may it be a direct reflection of our reasoning capacity. If you ask me, Ham, what have you done to get where you are today? I'll give you an answer. Reason. Is that what you did differently? Because you're so young, and what you've been able to achieve, I think my next question will be, what did you do different from your age mates or your peers? Reason. Reason. Because, you see, I'm constant on this thing of reason, because that's, that's all. <laughs> That's all there is if you want to solve a problem. When God created humanity, uh, in fact, God created us naked, but with a brain. It is only through the brain that we manage to transform over a given period of time. Now we are flying, everything is on the phone, uh, ICT. Yeah. These are all, you know, it is evidence of our reasoning capacity as humans. So when you ask me, Ham, what do you think you do different from others that has mm. made you achieve mm. what you achieved? Yeah. It's just reason. If we want to develop and elevate Africa, I think we should attack the mind of the Africans. If we can get Africans to reason, I think we shall have solved all the problems of Africa. If Africa holds all the world majority of the world resources, yet we are still donated to up to date. We take resources in raw materials, minerals, and they are brought back in form of peanuts in donations. What stops us from utilization of the available resources and their exploitation towards or a finished product in line or in the direction of our prosperity? What is stopping us? The resources are here now. What is stopping us? You are not reasoning enough? But, but uh, according to you, what do you think is the problem of Africa? You know, I don't want it to sound arrogant. If you said, um, I th inhabited reason, but I, I think we haven't exploited our reasoning capacity to forge a way forward for our continent. Because at the end of the day, if you ask me what does Africa need to do to develop, hmm. I will tell you things like unity. But it takes reason for us to unify. We cannot unify physically if we haven't unified in the mind. <laughs> we talk about borders, but uh, these borders are only physical. The real borders of Africa are in our minds. If we agreed mentally that we take out the borders, I think they would be out. But we fail to reason even on the simplest things. Africa would, be one, would, would have one unified flag. Africa would have a free trading zone. Africa would be, would be traveling on one passport. 
why do I need a, to cross from, from here to South Africa through a visa? All these things, you know, the limiting factor of our ability to grow despite the resources we hold as a continent is reason. You know, someone might ask what is reason, what is reason, but you know, you see, reason is so simple and so precise that its strength lies in its, its softness. Actually, it takes reason to reason. Hmm. And yet, almost we have all the capacity to adjust and kickstart our reasoning capacity. The books I wrote were known to tell you where harm has been, how much he has achieved, what is he looking to achieve. No, these books were made to kickstart a person's reasoning capacity. To make you think, what am I doing wrong? How can I explore the prevailing circumstances towards my own progress? Mm. I don't want to go too much into Africa now. Um, I'll come back into that. But let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, let's go back to how it all started. What was your first ever business that you invested in? When it comes to my personal progress, I started as a young man, immediately after my uh, A-level classes, before joining campus, I started trading. First and foremost, my family has a, a trading background, but I started really small, trading in garments on retail scale, uh, mainly ladies' garments and, and bags. Then uh, I moved into to another, to another uh, bigger scale of the same. I started getting these things from Thailand, Hong Kong, and China, and selling them not only to Uganda domestically, but also regionally to Burundi, business people from Burundi, Rwanda, Sudan, Congo. Uh, as my capital grew, grew, I moved into real estate, putting up a few commercial structures. Now I've moved into industrialization, like you can serve a lot of projects running. I'm putting up a stadium for $200 million. I'm setting up 500 houses, an estate of 500 houses. I'm setting up uh, um, agro-processing industries. Uh, so I'm doing quite a lot. When you see your project around, how does that make you feel? As in? I mean, when you see your project around, when you're walking around and you see what you've been able to achieve, how does that make you feel? Actually, as an element of reason, I don't take too much pride in what I've achieved because uh, the reality is what I've achieved, I already have. Otherwise, if you focus too much on what you have within perimeters of reason, then it denies you the drive to strive for what you haven't achieved yet. I don't think it is an element of reason to take too much pride in, in, in what you hold. Really? Yeah. But I, I mean, in, in Africa, people who make it always want to let us know that they've made it. But what I have, I have. Whether I'm proud or not, it is there. You see, as a young African, when I see a fellow young African who has been able to achieve so much success in a short time, we tend to hate on them, thinking that, okay, how did this guy accumulate his wealth? You know, we tend to attributed to other sources. I don't know, has anyone ever? I mean, yeah, negativity is one of the limiting factors of progress in any society. And trust me, Africans at large are too negative. They always want to pull down wherever they see going up. But you see, that goes back to the mind. It is an element of inhibited reason. Because maybe if I'm up, I can pull you down. Hmm. I can pull you up. Hmm. I can't pull you up when we are both on the ground. But you see, they don't think that way. At the end of the day, they always fight too much to pull you down. And if you ask me, where do I get pr pride? Am I proud of what I've achieved? Yeah, to some extent. If young people in Africa mm. look up to me mm. in what I've achieved, because you see, success and failure cannot be limited to an individual to some extent. You learn this with time. Mm. In fact, prosperity or progress 
in a poor society becomes more of a liability than an asset after some time. Because people look at you and they are like, you see what? Harm has got our resources. Maybe the resources we have present would be enough if all of us had eco shares. But how come he has too much and we have less? So they start hating on you. But you don't hate back. As a reasonable member of society, you start thinking, what can I do to improve the lives of those around me? That is where you find, um, like we have a problem, majority of Africans are leaving the country, going abroad. This has been brought by our education systems that were impo imported and imposed. An education system is supposed to provide corresponding solutions or build the society, the young generation, mm. with the capacity to solve problems within the prevailing circumstances. But these imposed, imported and imposed education systems don't address our problems as Africans the way they are on ground. That is why when majority of them finish studying, they are only thinking about one thing. How do I go abroad? abroad. In fact, I would say we blame uh, slavery. But there are more Africans willing to leaving the country today, going abroad, moreover, qualified ones with the degrees than they were when they were being taken on chains. What does it mean? That we've been out prisoned mentally. Slavery never left Africa. It was simply upgraded from physical slavery to mental slavery. And that is the problem we have. So the West has successfully out prisoned Africans. When you look at the United States, I would say one of the best elements that has penetrated the African mind is Hollywood. Because our young children think that what is in Hollywood, that's the way they should live. And the signature mark of 90% of American movies is the White House. Yeah. So I was like, um, what can I do with the resources I have that can get majority of my fellow Africans and Ugandans per se, start believing in themselves and the fact that we can make it here. And I was like, if I'm to put up my headquarters, let me make it like the White House, to give them confidence. Someone passes it and is like, wow, it's just like the, the one in the United States. So, you know, the mind is key. Hmm. When you look at the house I, I built, I live in a very big house on 11 acres. Yeah. But I, you know, a person needs only one room. I have like eight cars, but you can drive one car at a time. But why? That big house, a person can only live in one room. A person can only live on one bed. And even on the bed, you can only stay on one side of the bed. Mm -hmm. But why do I do all that the way you saw it? The modern... To illustrate my fellow Africans and Ugandans, look here. What you see in the States, we can equally do it. Yeah. If I can get more Ugandans and Africans believing in themselves as an element of reason, together we can lift this continent up. But something as, as simple as believing in our originality and character and the fact that we are Africans, mm. and it is our responsibility as Africans to develop this country, has failed. Then we have even failed to take the first step. What is the worst thing you've ever heard about yourself? The what? The worst thing you've ever heard about yourself. No, I don't attract negativity, so I always let it pass. But I mean, you've heard anything that people said out there that, I mean, you have a platform. I mean, people have said a lot of things about you, right? That probably you don't care or anything like that. But what is that one thing that you heard about yourself and be like, oh my goodness, you sat in your room and uh, you started laughing. No, but uh, as an element of reason, like I told you, Africans are negative in, in general. <coughs> Ugandans inclusive, but uh, when you apply reason like I do, you come to realize that uh, everything comes at a cost. Why do you expect to be richer than the majority of the people in your society? And you expect them to clap and love you so much? No. It is a natural thing. Hate is part of uh, the human cycle. So uh, 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 instead of, you know, making me feel bad, hmm. I've learned how to live with it and how best can I use it towards improvement of my, in, towards my progress and improvement of the society where I live. So instead of 
people will always hate you. If you are better than them, regardless of where you are, people will always hate you. It is part, so the better you adjust your reasoning uh, capacity and, and, and you accept it, mm. uh, the better you move forward, the faster you move forward. I want to know why agro-processing? Why you ventured into agro-processing? Like, like I told you, <clears throat> I look forward to how I can improve the society where I live. Uganda is a country that has got uh, very good climate, fertile soils, and currently very young energetic population. Hmm. But uh, the best item that can have this country grow, and maybe it, it is almost the same, the same in most of these African countries, yeah. is uh, through finding markets for our agro produce. We import, we export a mm. lot of raw materials mm. and import a lot of finished goods at 10 or 20 times the price for what we imported it at. So I was thinking if I can set up integrated agro processing plants, I can add value and look for the demand for agro produce not just domestically, domestically through import substitution, mm. but also regionally and internationally. That way, I would have improved the uh, lives of majority of Ugandans. Mm. Because, you see, I'm not going for farming, no. The Ugandans will be the outgrowers. Then I'm staged at value addition. If I can market, if I can aim for the market, specifically moving within the directions of demand and supply, I look for the market, I process and export and bring money back home. Mm. That way I will improve a lot of lives for a lot of households in Uganda. So that is why I moved into agro-processing and value addition. Okay, it was also at my net worth yeah, in the long run, but this time the difference would be, it is not limited to me as an individual, but it is cutting across majority of Ugandans. And I don't expect to do this just in one central region. Mm. Uganda, I mapped Uganda into 10 zones. And I plan to put integrated agro-processing plants in 10 zones of Uganda. If God grants me the life and the time and the reasoning capacity to pull it off. How, how many buildings have you built so far in Uganda? Do you have numbers? No, I have quite a lot of commercial properties uh, in Uganda. Uh, in various areas, uh, from commercial structures to now real estate housing structures for, for, for residential. Mm. I have quite a number of projects, quite a number. Uh, I'll give you my company profile and you see right. it's quite, quite. Uh, what is the major challenge that you faced on your journey? I would say negativity, people are so negative. Even if you are doing something to their advantage, some may do it out of ignorance, uh, but majority do it out of hate. So that leaves me wondering, how shall we pull up when we fight so much to keep each other down? But, 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 but this is genuine in Africa, I think. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why you've failed to take off. Apart from Uganda, what other countries are you investing in? I have quite a number of properties. I have um, a, logistic, a logistics company in, uh, in the United States trading as uh, um, Express Logistics in Dallas. Uh, I also quite own property in the UK. Uh, I'm quite spread out, but I'm mainly focused and invested in Africa. Africa is an African man, eh? <laughs> um, your biggest project so far? No, like you've seen, uh, you've got a chance to move around my projects, and I think all my projects are big. But agro-processing and value addition is going to be my biggest project because you see our economy is small mm. as Uganda mm. and my aspirations and projections are big mm. so 
ability of someone's capacity to grow is determined by the size of the market and purchasing power of the market where he's selling the product. So if I penetrate and take agro-processed products beyond Uganda to the big economies where we can sign contracts in billions mm -hmm. of dollars, I think I'll spread bigger and better and I'll be able to remit reasonable amounts of money or draw back reasonable amounts of money into the outgrowers who are Ugandan. So my plan forward is not individual but communal. Africans are taken up by short-term desires and emotions, not progressive reasoning. I think people need to have a copy of this book because we've been talking about reasoning. So I would say that the secret behind your success is reason. Am I yeah, right? If 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 I've managed to make it in Africa, yeah, where everyone believes conditions are very poor, that means I have managed to reason out a difficult situation in Africa. Maybe if he was in America, I would be the richest man today. Because I would apply my reasoning capacity within the prevailing circumstances then. Here in Africa, all systems are down. In America, systems are up. Someone can wake up and become rich, rich uh, from something as small as, you know, people liking uh, something very funny. Exactly. You put something up, people like it, and you're up because the marketing strategy is there. People have access to information. Uh, you know, the book is the systems yeah. present for someone to make mm. it already. But here in Africa, we are still in manual, analog. <laughs> Everything there is fast, it is modern. And, and you, you don't think that is the reason why so many Africans cannot break through that system? But for us to make it as a continent, it shouldn't be limited to, to just individuals, like we said. But reasoning must be evident within all our structures and systems, including our governments. If you have a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Our reasoning capacity. The reasoning capacity of Africans. Reason, and you see, reasoning is simple. Simply being open-minded is an element of reason. Open-minded. The ability to take in information. When someone is talking to you, that ability to take in information and analyze it before mm. you can act, that mm. is an element of reason. Mm. Believing in yourself, that is an element of reason. Mm. Being patient yet consistent with what you want, that is an element of reason. Never giving up once you fall. That is an element of reason. Taking personal responsibility. And you say, you see, I owe myself the responsibility to make myself better and the society where I live. That is an element of reason. You, you don't wait for anyone to come and carry you forward. You, you don't blame government for your failures. You don't blame your parents for your failures. You simply adjust to the fact that, look, if I have anyone in the world, I have me. Then how do I better my life? You know, that alone is an element of reason. So, success or failure are a mere reflection of our reasoning capacity. So, if we could attack the F African mind towards reason, I think that's the best thing that can ever that, that can ever happen to Africa. We wouldn't have most of these differences. Hmm. Uh, not until recently there has been a, a war in Europe, but there are things the Europeans and the West had reasoned out that regardless of our differences, killing each other is not a solution. I am an independent individual hmm. and a private member of the society. Hmm. I don't hold any public funds for clarity hmm. and uh, when you say government hmm. if you mean that the government has 
put in place mm. the right prevailing circumstances mm. or platform under which a reasonable man like me mm. has been able to exploit the prevailing circumstances like security and freedoms to make it to where I am today. It is 100% true. Government has provided the right prevailing circumstances for me and the people that can apply reason in Uganda to make it big. That is a fact. Otherwise, if there was insecurity here, maybe I would be dead. But it is government that keeps us secure. And it is government that protects us with our properties. Mm. And it is government that gives us the right to prosper without necessarily trying to pull you down. Yeah. So, which means, apart from that, there's no government funding? No, I have zero government. I don't have any coin from government. I've never taken any money from government. Your first ever money, you see, okay, let me pick this question from this way. In Africa, funding a project is very difficult. Yeah. I interviewed a, a, a one of successful men in Ghana, and then he told me that he actually got the money from his friends. Those days, you know, you put money together, and then they give it to one person. That's how he built his wealth out of it. What was the first money that you received for your first business? The first capital to start your first ever business? Like I told you, <clears throat> my family background is business. So I come from a business family. family. Wow. So it is from that background that I started working with small substantial capital. Mm -hmm. Not too much capital. Actually, too much money is not capital. Then you can't make it productive. Capital is that little amount of money you insert in a business we, on the probability of losing it or gaining more, which I call a risk, hmm. then it starts multiplying. The multiplier effect is what translates into. into actual success and progress and prosperity in the long run. So a constant engine, a constant productive engine is what makes a person wealthy. Okay. You're building a 40-seater, 40 40,000 capacity stadium. Yeah. In, right in the middle of um, the city of Kampala. Yeah. And when I got there, I saw only black engineers. And I was amazed because I've never seen anything like that before. Because anytime you see any big construction going on, we tend to see either the Chinese or maybe the whites surveying everything. No, but maybe when you look at the stadium, how many Africans have built a stadium like I've done? Maybe I may be the first or one of the few. What I've done in its totality as building a stadium, it is an illustration to my fellow Ugandans and Africans that look here, even for massive projects like this one, we can do it ourselves. And I've made sure all the people I employ, all the engineers, and everyone on the stadium is totally, absolutely, completely Africans. So I'm trying to show them that look here, we can do it. If I've done it, you still can, you can do it. Let us put our hands together and make sure we build Africa. For it is our obligation as Africans to build Africa. If we don't take that on us or responsibility upon us, that it is our obligation to build Africa, then Africa shall never develop. When you talk of an investment or investor in Africa, it's synonymous to a foreigner. But that is what we are trying to change right now. We are trying to show everyone that look here, yes, we can develop Africa as Africans. This is our identity. This is our, we are defined by who we are. We are Africans. Africa as us. And we have Africa. So, we leave it for, who will develop Africa if we don't take the responsibility upon us to build, to, to, to build and develop Africa? We have limited ourselves to mediocrity and, and, and uh, for any big projects you look at in Africa, it's either done by the West, by the Europeans, by the Chinese, yet they have the same red blood like we are flowing in our veins. We are humans like, like them. We can actually even do better than them if we address our minds to reasoning. And for me, I've decided to stop talking about it and illustrate. 
maybe talking may not be convincing enough within perimeters of reason that look it is possible for us to make it that's why i wrote a book success and failure based on reason and reality for reality is what it is as you see it not what you want it to be how many people have you employed currently i employ close to 4600 employees directly under me and they are all ugandans how do you define africa what does when you hear the name africa what comes into your mind it would be unrealistic of me to define something under reasonable perimeters that is existent africa is what it is the way you see it and I, I, all i can say is africa is blessed with a lot of natural minerals africa is blessed with energetic people africa is blessed with you know africa is blessed with everything apart from inability for us to reason on how to exploit and explore the prevailing circumstances and available resources to us towards our progress and prosperity as a continent the only missing factor in africa is reason Otherwise God has blessed us with everything we need for us to make it. It will be unrealistic and unreasonable for any African to blame that we are not blessed by nature. To blame God that we are never blessed by nature for we are fully blessed. If we can only reason out to now to explore and exploit the prevailing circumstances and resources we hold at hand towards our prosperity as a continent. You made it in Africa, but an ordinary African is saying that it's not possible to make it in Africa. But that statement, from a reasonable perspective, is wrong. How can you say that it is wrong? It is, it is impossible to make it in Africa. Yet the Africans that have made it, it is defeated by reason and reality. You see, that is exactly what I'm fighting: inability for Africans to believe in themselves. If I can do it, you can do it. What is the difference between me and you? We all have the same time in a day. We have 24 hours. I don't have any different. What do I do different from you that has made me prosper and has kept you in the state you are at? For me I think it is all about it's all in the mind. It all starts and ends in the mind. One is reasoning capacity is a direct path toward success or failure. the difference and gap the difference gap and distance between success and failure is reason before i let you go i'm so sorry i think i've been asking so many questions i i have a lot of africans in the diaspora that watches my videos yeah if you have a message to them what would that message be africans living abroad No Africans go abroad looking for better better ways of survival. They are where they are. And they they are in the best position to determine and articulate the forge way forward from where they stand. It would be unreasonable and unrealistic of me to authoritatively give an opinion on a position for which I'm not part of from any perspective but I can give an opinion on what it is in Africa today maybe majority have left because of the prevailing circumstances like our weak education system that has made them believe you can only make it abroad not in Africa like I told you these are imported and imposed education systems that we are never drafted realistically to meet the challenges and prepare the african child with the equipment to articulately analyze and understand the challenges at hand and forge corresponding solutions mm. maybe one of the biggest problems africa has is our education system because you see we are born africans but it prepares us into modern western slaves if i can put it articulately 
whereby by the time someone is leaving university, all they can think of is go and look for better resources abroad. And maybe that's why the majority of people living ab abroad. So if qualified engineers, qualified doc doctors, qualified nurses are all living in Africa, how is Africa going to grow? Maybe we should start believing in ourselves, our origin. I think most of them are also living because the systems in Africa don't really work. But it all goes back to reason. Okay. Now, okay. So you are leaving Africa for who? <laughs> for Africa is what for, you have. For me and you. No, but <laughs> you are an African. Are you an African? Yes. So why don't you first believe in the fact that you are an African? Identity is an element of reason. Understanding your identity it is an element of reason. Hmm. Saying I'm by the names of a Miss Chugun, I'm by such and such an age, I am a black man and I'm an African, and what can I do to improve my life and the lives of those around me? So, uh, deterrence and uh, does running away from a problem solve it? No. Uh, if I'm looking for modernity, I should go look for it elsewhere. Have you solved that problem? No. Actually, you've moved to society that you're not, you're a foreigner in that particular society. So, and majority only the accounting, you're not even a citizen, you don't even qualify. That is why I decided to do the White House in Uganda. Let us struggle or strive towards achieving our desires in our motherland. Instead of struggling and striving so much towards leaving our motherland. I know majority live because of different prevailing circumstances. I don't want people to get me wrong. But from a reasonable point of view, that is a personal opinion, which may it be a fact or not, depending on the reasoning capacity of the reader. Mm. But that is my opinion. Within perimeters of reason, self-identity is very key. And taking personal responsibility is equally key. So, whose responsibility is it to develop Africa and pull it forward? Is it for the Westerners? Is it for the Europeans? Or is it for the Africans? So, if all the Africans are leaving Africa, whom are they leaving Africa for? A final message to all Africans watching us right now. To all my fellow Africans and the world at large, to everyone listening to me, My message would be, if you get a chance to get hold of my two books, Success and Failure Based on Reason and Reality, and Reason as the Old Masterpiece, I would advise you to read it. For I'm not trying to tell you how much I've achieved, but how can we kickstart each other's reasoning capacity to make sure we make the world we live in and the African continent a better place.